remembering here, don't take this verbatim as seventh, okay? It's scientific. Depression is an estimated factor in two-thirds of all suicides. And where are you reading this from? This is from the Christian Mental Health Services right here in Grand Rapids, Michigan, under the title Depression and Suicide. My point is, is that if we lead the nation in a city of our size in depression, would it not be a relatively sound conclusion to estimate that our suicide rates run parallel to those high depression rates? See, these are the kind of questions that M Live and Fox 17 News are not going to connect. They're mm-hmm. not going to ask those questions. Uh, the proof of this is, Darren, for 15 years I've heard how many veterans are committing suicide. A rate that today is how many in a day? 22 every day. 22 veterans die a day. And I've asked their, the mothers hand. of veterans. I had a college and a high school a uh, girlfriend whose son was in uh, Iraq. I said, why is there such a high number today for military veterans compared to other conflicts that had a much higher rate of fatality? I mean, we're, we're, let's look at World War II. Did the veterans of World War II have anywhere near a commensurate suicide rate as today's veterans? Her answer was no, not even comparable. Well, somebody needs to ask why that is. Mm-hmm. Somebody needs, because if you do, you might get an answer that sounds like this. Psychologically, the veterans that are coming home are not content, A, with their service, with the objectives of the United States, or they have memories of their enlisted service that they'll never get over, other than fear, other than the typical and, and egregious and terrible ramifications of war. Mm -hmm. there's something they saw, something they know that this society is not going to open up to you because if they did, you quickly estimate that's the reason why there's 22 suicides today. They got to Iraq and found out, like Tillman did, there's no reason to be there. Mm -hmm. They saw innocent civilians blown away every day, and it got to them. They're human beings, thank goodness. But they're not, they're not going to go down that path any more than the news services here will really analyze the fact that GR leads large cities in the United States with depression. Won't do it. I guarantee it they won't do yeah. it. Yeah, and one of the other things, too, I want to mention about the high rates of suicides with veterans is also things that they have perpetrated. You know, if you're a sniper, and I, I know somebody who was a Vietnam veteran sniper in the u.s marine corps he's he's got bad mental health issues he's got some bad but he doesn't the same talk friend about we it. both have no different friend okay well it's, it's just somebody story. i know yeah okay but we talked on the show a while back about the increase in suicide rates among drone operators in the u.s military because they get to see all this carnage on camera live on a screen hundreds of miles away, and nobody's providing them any sort of mental health treatment of any kind. And it's ridiculous. I played on a uh, three-year championship college football team. One Mm -hmm. of the toughest kids on the team, a friend of mine who out of college went to Vietnam. Mm Mm-hmm was in Vietnam for two tours. They, he, they strapped him to the door of a helicopter. His boots were strapped to the floor, and he had a machine gun that he sprayed all over civilians yeah. in many cases. Yep. Okay. He then went and served in Iran, one or two uh, terms. Yeah, one or two tours. And, yeah. then, and then after that, I believe, either Afghanistan or Syria, he was over there. For, for just a long, long time. He was a good comparative analysis of even the Vietnam War because he said the difference between that war and the other wars was that there was no feeling of foundation underneath mm-hmm. the service there in Iraq. People mm-hmm. were just going through the motions. They didn't have the fervor of uh, the World War II soldier. The guy today can't sleep. 
He can't find peace. He can't find rest because he remembers the faces. He remembers the faces, and I think he has a remembrance unlike the veterans of other wars. My dad was a veteran. My, my dad, uh, he talk on night with fond memories. The veterans that I see today, and believe me, I can't speak, even though I was in the Army for a short time, I can't speak of the trauma of war. I can't do that. But I can look at the numbers on the desk and tell you there's something definitely different about the veterans' experience who are back in this country now and killing themselves terribly, tragically, at 22 uh, a day. And the military won't tell you why that is. They won't give you any other reason other than it's tough for them out there. They can't get a job. They need more benefits. They need more honor. They need more honor? They're off the airplane every night. Watch the evening news. Every night there's a mother, daughter, son, daughter uh, reunion of the father getting back. We have more military parades uh, at football games, uh, flyovers. There was, I watched a Christmas special the other day, and it was saturated with military involvement and honor. Mm-hmm. They're, not, they're not lacking in honor in any way. They're not being called names like the Vietnamese veterans that got, or uh, yeah, Vietnam the veterans from Vietnam. Vietnam veterans, yeah. Yeah, so what you have is a quantitative question, just like you have in Grand Rapids here. What is the real underpinnings of these numbers? And if you're brave enough, folks, to listen, you're going to hear some things we hope make you think. There's another part of this. There is another link within this, and this is uh, the National Center for Biotechnology Information. It's part of the National Institutes of Health. This is an article, Marital Dissolution and Major Depression in Midlife, a Propensity Score Analysis. And this, I'm going to read bits and pieces here because this is a rather lengthy and rather scientific article. So stressful life events are associated with an increased risk for a range of mental health problems, including the first onset and recurrence of clinically significant mood disorders. Within the broad class of potentially negative social upheavals, marital separation and divorce confer many adaptive challenges. Separating from a spouse involves numerous logistical and financial burdens, and many people also face substantial emotional challenges including grieving the end of the marriage, revising one's self-identity, reforming social networks, and making major changes in parenting practices. Although most adults manage the transition of divorce well and can be described as resilient, a subset of people become stuck on trajectories of long-term stress and strain. The extent to which this stress and strain translates into risk for a diagnosable mood disorder remains to be determined. So... That continues on with the uh, uh, talk of uh, marriage and divorce and depression at this point. Darren, what's the disease called from lack of sunlight? It's uh, seasonal affective disorder. SAD. Okay. Uh, This uh, WFGR maintains that one of the problems is the grayness here. The constant cloudiness in Grand Rapids. (laughs) Is Is Anchorage a U.S. city? Oh, boy. Of course Let it me, is. Yeah. Of course Anchorage is. Of course. So is Fairbanks. As a matter of fact, Anchorage is probably comparable to the size of Grand Rapids. Mm-hmm. Anchorage, it has one, maybe two hours of sunlight in the middle of December. You're going to talk mm-hmm. about a deep and dark December, yeah. Simon and Garfunkel. It doesn't get much <laughs> deeper and darker than it is in Anchorage. They're not having the same. Evidently, they didn't win. The, uh, they're not listed from any list you just read to me, Darren. Yep. Again, that's the, if they're not part of the smart survey, they're not included in this. So, so you got to you got to get rid of it. Yeah. It's like when Michael Moore went through the list of gun killings. Well, let me. No, I've got them on the list here. Among all the cities, and there's 123 cities that were ranked here in in what in this category in in total 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 okay. 123 cities total large medium small. Anchorage, Alaska is number 79 on the list. How can that be if cloudiness is the problem, WFGR 98.7? Yeah. Does it get cloudy in Bismarck, North Dakota? Does it get cloudy up in Seattle? I mean, they're launching to, they're, they're about as far north as we are, aren't they? I don't know. We have the Great Lakes. I suppose there's a little more cloudiness. Throw it out. Mm-hmm. Throw it out and look at some real social conditions which aren't detected by obesity rates, 
by divorce rates, by the number of cloudy days in a row, why this place is depressed. Yeah. Why this place is depressed. You know, when they say that the United States is 27th now as far as the rating for democracies in the world, mm-hmm. we've had this discussion before. Yes. You can come up with all kinds of – not you, but people can come up with all kinds of excuses – that polling is not right. Who who made that? Some socialist over in uh, Sweden come up with that polling? No, that is a polling that uses rock hard integers, and you can look them up if you don't believe it. And mm-hmm. people need to realize when they say we're that far down for freedoms that our media is ranked even lower. Darren, mm-hmm. you need to ask yourself some questions. You need to ask yourself this question right off right off the top. You need to ask yourself why United States, why the United States has 20, I think it's 20 million people who die a year because they don't have health coverage. You need to look at these numbers. You need to ask yourself, Darren, all of us need to look at these numbers and come to conclusions. Anybody can throw out statistics, but are you brave enough to analyze these numbers? I got one for you. Michigan is the highest state for charter schools, the number of charter schools in in, in the United States. Michigan yeah. has more for-profit charter schools than any state in the United States. Simultaneously, yeah. Michigan now is the worst and lowest rated reading proficiency state for elementary students in the United States. Alabama, Mississippi, those traditional southern states that were so anemic academically, they're ahead of us now. Mm-hmm. Do you think America? Do you think Michiganders can look at that and scratch their head and say, "Wait a minute, we went from the best educate one of the best education systems when it was strictly public, and now that it's saturated with charter schools, and we're the leading one in the nation in charter schools. Our academic proficiencies have gone to hell. Yeah. Does it take a brain surgeon to extrapolate and connect those dots? In my training, it's called." Comparative analysis. There's nothing that leaves argument when you have comparative analysis. But you also got to remember the audience that you're uh, trying to get that message across to, Jack. 60 million people voted for Donald Trump. 60 million rubes. 60 million morons. Yes, I don't care. Write to us. You, I'm telling it the way that it is. If you voted for him, you're a moron, you're a rube, you're a sucker. You know, Bottom line. Yeah, you know the famous sculpture of the guy naked sitting with his arm on his elbow? Yeah. You're aware of that? Yeah, the, the thinker. The yes. thinker. Yeah. Cont- he's contemplating. Yeah. Okay. The human being should look at the suicide rates of the veterans and contemplate. Yeah. Put your head on your, your, your chin on your, your hand and think. Put your the same head on your hand and think about why Grand Rapids is a leading depressed city, large city in the United States. Because you need answers. And I'm going to go on a little bit further with the topic of mental illness. And we're going to get off of this for a while because Grand Rapids has a high population that has been diagnosed with mental illness. We got to talk about what are the options out there for people for treatment. And this is a story that was originally posted to M Live to the Grand Rapids Press. And by the way, I just want to tell the folks at Town Square Media, the owners of WFGR, it has nothing to do with the sun, like you said, Jack. This is Julie Mack reporting for M Live. Grand Rapids' first psychiatric urgent care facility is on track to see seven to eight thousand patients in its first year, and is drawing people from across the state. That is according to Pine Rest Christian Mental Health Services, which operates the center. This has only been open for a few months. This only opened earlier in 2019. In their first six months of being open, Pine Rest Psychiatric Urgent Care Center has seen people from 52 of Michigan's 83 counties. Bob Nightcamp, Chief Operating Officer for Pine Rest, said, quote, It's blown away our expectations. I know of people driving three hours from Charlevoix or Traverse City. I think that identifies a pent-up need. End of quote. Oh, really? Not according to Reagan. Well, not according to... Reagan closed the mental health facilities. And John Engler didn't help, and we'll get to that here in just a little bit. Let me continue. Pine Rest opened the urgent care on April 15th in Pine Rest Main Grand Rapids facility at 368th Street. 
The Urgent Care is designed to provide same-day assessment and treatment for adults.